Okay, everyone, she's here, <laughs> yay! So you get a chance to meet our guest speaker. Say your name for me, please. Evangeline Hundley. Okay. I thought I had it right. Thank you so much. Well, anyway, um, let's all give her a warm welcome from Carolina Orchards. And I'm just going to go ahead and let you get started and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. okay. Um, they're all here to see you. Good evening. Good evening. So good to see you. Thank you for your patience for me getting here. And it's a lovely evening, nice and warm, like a good hot South Carolina summer evening. And I want to just uh, tell you that I'm running for Congress to beat Ralph Norman and to retire him and bring him back home. I'm Evangeline Hundley. I live in the 5th District. I was born and raised here in the 5th District. The town that I'm from is Newberry, South Carolina. Just recently, they cut that out of the 5th District. So I just found that out at the end of the primary. It happened actually during the primary. It was in my district, so I was looking for that hometown advantage when I ran in the primary. And for those who voted for me, thank you, by the way. I appreciate that. And those who didn't or didn't know me, that is why I'm here today to introduce myself and tell you why I chose to do this job. I come from the background, again, I was born in Newberry and raised in this district under the great leadership of John Spratt. Who in here remembers John Spratt? Do you? Where are you from? York, South Carolina. York? Oh, he lived in, in this area. Who else? No one else? So are you guys um, from this area? Who all is from here? Right. I noticed there's a... Right, right here. Okay. All right. Well, wonderful. <laughs> Welcome to South Carolina. So who's been here for five years or more? Great, great, beautiful room. So I imagine everyone here is wondering, when was this area ever blue, right? And how did we get in this shape? Hmm? It happened during the Tea Party wave, and I, I'm looking at this audience, and I'm pretty much sure that you guys in here will remember when that happened, right? Took down one of the best leaders that this country has ever known. And I stand here wanting to fill those big shoes to bring back to this area good leadership. But also, it's a new day, it's a new time, so there's a need for new things. We have new people that have joined our state to make it the place that it should be. A lot of people I've noticed that have come back, especially in my culture, actually have roots in this area. Family maybe that have lived here in the past and, and migrated away and who are coming back now. I think that is a beautiful thing, but they're coming back to a place that doesn't seem like it's changed very much. What we gotta do is change this place and make it the progressive area that it is supposed to be. And when I say progressive, I mean in progress. We should have better schools. We should be able to retain our teachers. We should have communities that are invested in that have not been invested in for a long time. We should have health care for all. We should not be still stuck back in a time before time and being the last country to, to do the things that benefit more people than it doesn't. For instance, with living wages, we need to have living wages. Um, we need to have family paid leave. We need to have universal pre-K. We need to have free public college education. We need to fight like our lives depend on it for our voting rights, for our women's rights. So the top few things that I mentioned, free public education, um, and I did say public education, we need to have the universal pre-K, healthcare for all. You know, I can just sing that song because we're already working on it. The people that I intend to work with in Congress 
are already pushing out the best policies, the policies that will affect the most of us and change the dynamic from top down, building again from the bottom up, trying to restore and rebuild our middle class. And when I say that, I mean that you're able to, when you work the 40 hours, that you're able to take care of your family, not just make the ends meet, but to be able to save, be able to plan, be able to have vacations, be able to, to have your children participate in things. Um, and some of us are fortunate, and, and we've been able to, to, to live what we might call comfortably. But there, dare I say that 90% of America is really our average wage is $39,000. Can you believe that? which means that 10% of America is making more than 90% of the people who are working. So while your income you may feel comfortable in, it still doesn't meet, for, as, as a group of people, the living wage that it's supposed to. I mean, in this state, y'all, it's poverty wages. I, I talk to people all the time, and that is some of the things that I hear at the top of the list your everyday working class people who are really are just making the ends meet. Single moms working two jobs and having to raise children. Dual families having to have two jobs and raise children. So this is a time when the wealthiest country in the world needs to step up and stop accepting mediocrity. And in our state, we can lead the way to that. Let me tell you a few numbers. In South Carolina, we vote as a state 45-55. 45% Democrat, 55% Republican. And we have been voting that way because I've been looking at these voting records that extend well back 20 years or more. And I will tell you that over the period of election, that's been what we've been doing. Why then do we have 90% representation that is Republican, when 45% of this state votes Democratic. That's in, in every election. So we got to change uh, some things up. I would dare say that that has to do with gerrymandering and, and cutting the districts in a way that benefit one party and that party being the Republican Party. But in no way should we have a state that doesn't represent the people that live here. One, we have one, Jim Clyburn. And Jim Clyburn's district is District 6. So that's pretty much who he can be concerned about, is District 6. But everything that we have that has been pushed through by the federal government that our state can't turn away, because they try to turn away everything that comes <laughs> through, like opening up the Medicaid exchanges, um, accept, <coughs> accepting funds, or using them properly that were from the rescue plan. We need to be worried and wondering what they're doing with the infrastructure money. And this is what it's all about, guys. When I go to Congress, we pass budgets. We are the ones who determine the money. And so when we pass these things, we need to know that our state is getting everything that it needs. The people who have the greatest needs are being addressed, that we are investing in our schools, we're investing in, in our, our roads, but investing mostly in our people. When we cut that tax credit, okay, take that, that tax credit uh, back that was given to the rich, wealthiest people, we're going to be able to use that money to do all those things that I just mentioned. And we're on our way to doing it because, you know, we just passed a bill that Biden just signed into office called the Inflation Reduction Act. And with that, we'll be doing just that with the 15% tax on billionaires who make, I think, over $2 billion. So that's not a lot to ask from people who have the most to benefit this country. Because when we start investing in the people, then we can see the fruits of our labor. It's, you can never go wrong when you invest in people. Because people then take that investment and they put it back into our economy. And then the wheels start to flow. 
you will start to flow. We should want to see each other do well. And there's and, and what we've the leadership that we've had has been neglecting us and we can't feel the changes and the good things that are happening from the top, meaning the current administration, because there's a big red wall here in South Carolina. So when you elect me, okay, check. You've taken care of your federal needs in the sense that you got somebody you can call on to hold accountable, to say, hey, what are we doing with that money? Or hey, we've got projects here that need to be tended to. Or hey, there are things that that we need to know how the money is being spent and how it's being invested. I can do that. I can watch dog, if you will, over the funds that come here to make sure that at least this part of our state is being taken care of. But there's a red wall that is almost impenetrable that doesn't affect, that causes other parts of our, our state and us too lately not to benefit from it. So. My mouth is a little parched. <laughs> I, I don't know if I brought any water or not. Pardon the interruption. So, so the money is where it's at. And if you have representation in your, thank you very much. If you have representation in your district, then you have someone that can be accountable to you for it. But we have representation right now that just says no to everything. There are some people that call him Nayman, and I kind of like that because that is what he does. I've looked at his record. The record speaks for himself. I call Ralph Norman a gift. He's a gift be, be, to me in this race <laughs> simply because he's done nothing for the last, in five years, He's passed three bills. He's been a part of, of voting really to pass three things. But I can tell you as of late, he's voted against the military. He's voted against women. He's voted against uh, schools. He votes against everything. If you ever checked out his record, you would wonder why does this man go to work every day? Just to vote no, I guess. There's no rhyme or reason to why he's serving today. And I feel like if you're gonna put someone there, put someone there that cares about what's going on in this state and that will be accountable to the people who I represent because I want to see us be a better, a better place. We got teachers leaving who are not coming back. We are just not investing in our children. And we're not putting monies into people who have health issues and, and, and providing the things that the richest country in the world can do. Did I mention we're the only country that doesn't do those things that I mentioned? Those top things, that's crazy. $20 trillion GDP and we cannot do the things that will help make our society better. But we can, we can and we will. We have to tout as Democrats what we do, what we have done. We have to determine that we will not accept where we are anymore. Preaching to the choir here, but if you know people that you can reach out to, to get them to come out and vote, that is what we have to do. We can win this district because we've had it for 38 years prior to that Tea Party wave. And for what they got for electing Ralph Norman, Mick Mulvaney first, then Ralph Norman is absolutely nothing. And the record speaks for itself. There's got to be something this man believes in, something that he believes in. I believe that no person should have to choose between health care and paying their bills. I believe that our children deserve universal pre-K. I feel like we're trying to raise a generation of dummies. Republicans have worked overtime to keep this state sick, poor, and ignorant. I'm running because I have a vision for this state, a vision 
that this state and the people in this state, and in my district at least, we can set the path, can be healthier, wealthier, and wiser. Healthier, wealthier, and wiser. That is the reason that I'm running, to get rid of the bad leadership and bring accountability back. But after you decide you want to elect your federal representative, please then vote for your governorship. When we get the governorship and we get Joe Cunningham in office, we will really feel it. The people here, wherever you guys came from, you might have come from states where you actually saw progress where you actually felt that things can be better and they should be better and no one should be trying to take people's rights to vote away. That no one should be working to take women's right to choose away. Well, it's like you step back in time when you came here. Well, the people that are in charge here want to keep us back in time. So we have a choice and that is to go forward to help our state move forward, to shout it from the mountaintop. We have someone who cares. I don't pretend to know it all, but I do know that there are good policies that can affect every life for the better. Every life. No one's going to suffer here. When, when we do better, they, whoever the they is, does better. There's never been a time when the top has suffered, and they're not going to start suffering just because we decide as a country we want to be a more prosperous, but prosperous in ways that are not always related to having the most money, but it's also not where you suffer and, and not have what you need to survive. So we should not be that kind of country. Let's change it. Let's change it. So I'm going to open it up. If you have any questions for me, a uh, little background. I'm a residential builder, I'm a developer, and I'm a realtor. And I started building in a small town called Newberry, South Carolina, and developed a 10-acre lot that my father owned into a, 20, a bunch of woods were there. And so I learned all the ins and outs of what it takes to develop property and, and developed a 21-lot subdivision there. And and so, you know, it was a lot of shock and awe that there was a woman, a black woman, but a woman that was even in this business. So all my life, I've had to deal with obstacles and, and challenges. I don't back down from the challenges. I know that when you bring something of quality to the table, follow the rules, do things accordingly, ask for what you want, and never take no for an answer. You can do anything that you want. And that I do believe in, because believe me, I had a town full of all men that just couldn't believe I was bulldozing my way straight through. And then respectfully, I ended up serving in, the, in that city as a commission, um, the zoning, building and zoning commission, uh, and then as chairman of that, sit on the boards for our chamber. So I know that it takes all of us to do this, and we can do it all together. They say Democrats are too nice. <laughs> and I want to beat up on Ralph so bad, but he beats up on himself. I mean, the record speaks for itself. Quality and progress is what we're going after. So anybody got any questions for me? I'm married, <laughs> I have grandchildren. And, and all this is on my website, if you haven't been. It's www.ehunleyforcongress.com. There is also a big fat donate button at the top. Yeah. I often get accused of, wait, the main thing. But no more, because that's the only way I'm going to beat Ralph. For us to get the message out that there's a better rep representation, there is representation coming. Not better, because he would have to be good for me to be better, right? Well. That is not the case. So how about representations coming, y'all? Let's vote for some representation. And while if we don't agree on everything, I am certain the most important things we can all agree on, right? So, and I'm, and I'm a Southerner, <laughs> you know, I'm from here. And um, I, I love my home, but I do not like its politics. But we can change it. So I guess I was a little shocked that there's 45% 
of the, our population is Democrat. Isn't that amazing? I'm, because um, I am politically active in national politics, in donating for candidates, and I became very aggressive in the last election cycle. Me too. Um, but I'm, I was just very shocked by the 45%. So how do we get the 45% out? And obviously, I was going to ask how we help you. So Thank obviously, you. we can go to the donate button. Yes, but, but also, I, 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 it's a little shocking to me that, that we have that many Democrats yes, isn't in it? South Carolina. And 90% representation, guys. There's seven representatives. OK, it is broken out into seven districts and two senators. So there's nine people, and there's one Democrat. So, so lines to me are just, they're, they're very undermining because the people who need the most that we can give them, you know, are, are a, good government. Good government is all we ask. Good government is not supposed to give you everything. It's supposed to make your life better, to work with you, right? You give to your government, your government gives to you. It's a trade-off, right? So good government means that I care about you, what you pay in taxes, I'm gonna make sure it gets used for your life's benefit and not to fatten the pockets of people who have no need to get any fatter because we already use all their services anyway. We already give them daily and hourly business that they don't on top of that need, to, need our tax money too. So maybe that's how we get this across. How do we do that? We gotta knock doors like crazy. I got a target. If my, my win number is somewhere like 139,000. We have to target really the Democratic voters. There are enough Democratic voters to win this race. We have to knock doors. We have to make phone calls. We have to let them know that our democracy is at stake. Why did not I start with that? That we are about to lose everything if we don't make changes? It's not just this state, it's every state. And we're being undermined, and if we don't make these vital changes that we maybe never even considered before, we gotta do it now. Because it's, I feel like it's over if we don't. There's gonna be insurmountable blocks that make it so difficult for people. So we're making a big push to try to uh, inform, inform, inform. Let people know that there's two weeks of, of no excuse early voting here. We need to you know, hammer in those dates to make sure people get out to vote during that time so that you don't have to go all at one time. There's still mail-in balloting. So we gotta really just make calls, donate so I can get this message out because my message relates to the people who need it most. And I'm gonna tell you, probably like 90% of Trump voters, I say Trump voters, re Republican, but yeah, need um, everything we got. And I'm gonna represent everybody. I mean, at the end of the day, when I'm elected, it's called a constituency at that point. I have my voters and then my constituency. And again, if you're doing good, I'm doing good. If you're doing good, I'm doing good. So then they can feel it and say, why did I ever waste my vote on that darn Republican? <laughs> on Billy Bob down the street, because I know him. You know, it's people that they just kind of know and we don't know. So. Can you talk a little bit about the voting history specific to your district? Um, you, you know, yeah, yeah. To well, our vote, oh, yeah. well, like I said, our district is so similar to the makeup of the state. It is, okay. We have 45, 55, and that's what gives me hope. <laughs> and, and we've come so close, like 47 to, to 52 with Ralph Norman. Ralph Norman's been beat before. He ran back in 2008, no, 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 2006, before, I say that funny, don't I? Someone said, no one has ever said it that way, 2006, he ran back then, I think. And um, my guy beat him then, that was John Spratt. So he's run before and been beat. He slid in there on, on Mitt Mulvaney's coattails because people were stuck in that whole mode of red and, and not getting out to vote. So 67,000 people are the infrequent voters doing my numbers. I own the voter list for every single voter, all Republican and Democrat, and we're gonna use the heck out of it. So when you check Canvas, phone bank, we got the list, the names, the streets, the doors, 
we can help you get out here and get people on board. So, and don't be afraid to talk to everybody because it's about good government. This isn't about personalities. This isn't about, and that's our problem. <laughs> we want immediate gratification, personalities, and we do good policies and we don't talk about them as to how it relates to you directly. Sir? Uh, yeah, as you, sorry. Oh. I'll, I apologize. He oh. raised his hand. I don't know if anybody saw it like a while back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did not see you with the mic, ma'am. I apologize. I'll pass it on to you in a minute. Um, yeah, getting out the vote is obviously the key for getting elected. Say in that again, sir? Getting out the vote yes. is the key. And Stacey Adams has uh, oh. proven in Georgia how it's done. Yes. Do you get any help from the National Committee or other... Uh, People like Stacey Adams, have you contacted her? Uh, perhaps they can provide you some uh, help, some information, mm -hmm. some advice that could yes. be very useful in this case. That's my okay. question. Okay, that is a great question. Stacey Abrams is doing uh, wonderful, that's who you meant, right, in Atlanta for the governorship? Man, I tell you, I love her technique and I have thought about doing a tour of, it's got to be a registration tour that will do get out to vote throughout the, and that's kind of what she does, grassroots. It's getting on the ground. I will tell you this about whether reaching out, a couple questions you asked. Reaching out to Stacey Abrams, she's running a race for her life <laughs> right now. However, Fair Fight, her organization, is not based in South Carolina. See y'all, they've thrown us away. That's why we're going to have, they're going to have a baby earthquake when they see this district goes blue again. And it can and it will. However, she um, has an office, I think, based in North Carolina. And so I have considered, because we're border, you know, right here on the line, I have definitely considered seeing if they would partner with us in some way, give us some of their, you know, great ideas or maybe connections. Because what they do is the places that they are set up are the, what they call the swing states. And so they put all their energy, it's her organization, she founded it, of course, Fair Fight. But they put all their energy into those swing states to turn them all the way. So their machine, if you will, is, is, is for that. But the only reason I think it could work that we could perhaps partner on something is proximity. It's proximity because we're close to North Carolina and why not try to help out another, you know, partnering neighboring state who has a lot of people who work in North Carolina but live here, right? So that's a great question. And, and the DNC, you're talking about the national organization and then the, the next one, the DCCC and then the SCDP. Yes, uh, we have uh, not received a lot of, of things from them yet, but that's normal. Okay, first time at this, but I will tell you that, ask me that a week from now, because I'm gonna make that ask, and I expect all the help in the world for the GO, to get out to vote. Get out to vote. Yes, Jim Clary, I fully, he's already reached out, so I fully expect his endorsement and that to be a big deal. <laughs> so we'll do an endorsement with him and perhaps I'm kind of working on him for a commercial. So, so we will see, we are great, great, great. Did I answer? Okay. And you and you, did I answer? All right. He, he asked. Yeah, were you getting any funds from national? I get that all the time. You know, Everyone we, we wants to know. send out money to this one, that one, and the other one, but, you know, national. And I'm saying, well... DNC. Now, I have, every, every candidate who's won, especially when you become the nominee, you kind of expect that they would just pile on, right? You know, right. you hear them saying, oh, we've got so much money and we're about to run a whole line of commercials. Well, I'm, you know, I'm learning that that is not how it works. No. However, ask me in a week. I will never say no, and remember, I don't take no for an answer. Do not forget that. Your candidate <laughs> does not, nominee, does not take no. I will not take no for an answer. My mom was an English teacher, okay? So I have to watch it. When I speak, I will tell you, I come from 
and was born, like I said, and raised in Newberry. My mother taught during segregation, and she taught during integration. And she taught night school, and she taught homeschool. And all I've ever known is that my mother would teach. Don't let a child get put out of school. She was going to find them and teach them. There were, when I was growing up, there were people <laughs> that had, to me, gray hair. I was just a kid. And they would say, like, you know, she taught them. And, and I was, how is that possible, Mom? you teach you're young it was <laughs> called adult ed <laughs> is what it is so I finally learned that that's what what it was and it's such a beautiful thing um, sh she was my role model and my dad very close to my pop <laughs> we did that development together per se he's my advisor slash yes you can use this land, <laughs> and so, as dads would do with their baby girls, I'm the baby of five, so I have, and, and they're all alive, thank God, my parents, God rest their souls, have deceased, so my sister's the oldest, I'm the baby, and there's three brothers that I have in between, so um, we kind of scattered here and there, but we still are very close, we come together. And one son by birth and two children by marriage. Married for about 10 years now. <laughs> Not about, a little over 10 years. And he's normally my road buddy. But today I gave him a, bro a break, I apologize. And this is my campaign manager, Lenore Jackson. My right hand and everything. I tell you what, she's wonderful. <laughs> so blessed to have her. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of history about people. My dad's a barber, by the way. He, he owns a barber shop, and first black barber shop in the town of Newberry. They were politically active, that's where it comes from. They were activists in the best way during those times that they had to be, and what helped us to have the great opportunities we have today. And uh, so, rich history there had dad take me to school and mom to pick me up <laughs> from the barbershop. So barbershop politics is big <laughs> in my family. <laughs> yes, so that's a, a little bit about me. Here's a question over here. Yes, ma'am. Where do you stand on Biden? Where do I stand on Biden? I think he is doing a wonderful job. I think the man is going to go down in history as one of the best presidents that we have ever had. I agree with you. I don't like uh, your, I, don't, I can't remember his name, the uh, young man who's running for governor. Oh, Joe. <laughs> he says some very not nice things about Biden. And you know something, I'll never vote Republican, but he doesn't, he wants me, he makes me want to keep my fingers off his button. Oh my, I be. didn't know that. And uh, you know, Stacey Abrams was very, is very good, I love her, but when Biden went to Georgia, she dissed him. She did? She did. She did, did not know. show up. She all of a sudden had something to do someplace else. You just don't do oh, those well. things. Some, oh, well. You know, I'm from New York, and you just don't do those things. Well, I wish he'd give me a call, because uh, I would have him standing right here beside me. It's not about the man. That man was a gift to our country. He cares. He loves us. He has given so much for this country, and it's costed him so much to be in this position. Y'all know Joe <laughs> had no intentions of running for president, right? But he did it for us, and I'm so glad he did. And I'm more happy that the voters showed up. They got off their derrieres and came on out to vote because that's where our power is. Our power is in our vote. And we are going, we don't use it. We're going to lose it. And complacency is the enemy of democracy. So complacency is a no-no. And you know, we got a big uh, group here we got to really hone in on, and that's our millennials, because they determined <laughs> that election in 2016. I'm still trying to forgive them. Okay, today, because that was a pivotal moment in our country. And, um, and we're still dealing with it today, the, the fallout.
So we got to engage them, you know, there's a way. And, and let me tell you, every time I talk to one, and they give me all the little issues why they don't want to vote, we end up where they're saying, okay, okay, you know, I'm going to vote. And they are sincere about it because the connection has been made. And that connection is the vital, that, that they're, in, they're at the ages now where they understand what it's like to, to live, they understand the things that it takes to survive, and you just gotta talk to them. You gotta talk to them. What is your uh, take on the independence in the state, in South Carolina, in terms of getting them to come your way? That middle of the road that, yeah, voter? Yeah, the middle of the road, yeah. Like, like this lady right here, I wouldn't consider you, ma'am, an independent voter. You want your heart is straight for voting for good policy and the people who are gonna make good policy, right? So we're gonna have to look past Joe when, and things that he says, because I know he also says some offensive things about uh, people over a certain age. And I wouldn't say that, <laughs> simply because maybe, he, I, don't think I don't know, he might be talking about me, but, but in any case, it doesn't matter because everybody who has the ability to put input into our, the making of our government is so valuable. Do you understand? I would never uh, sacrifice the value of, of wisdom that comes only from age, right? We don't know until we've lived it. So you take that and you, you use that in addition to the youth. You have to marry the two. You have to bridge it. But you never, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I would not say that. <laughs> but we have to look past that because Joe is there aren't measurements <laughs> to match above what the current leadership that we have. So sometimes we gotta bite that bullet and vote for what's best for the state and, and for what I can do from my office to make sure that Joe is doing what he needs to do based on the promises that he's made because he knows good policy and he knows that he's gonna have people underneath him and above him that will work with him. So. Yeah, I, I have considered. Uh, yes, ma'am. If he does something, if he doesn't do things to help, if he doesn't do things to help us, how? Why are we doing it to help him? We need to get the Democrats, and that's the only reason I would vote for him because yes. he's a Democrat. Yes, but I understand. It doesn't make you proud or want to, and that's yeah. why a lot of people probably don't go to the polls because they said he's not. He's going to hurt me. He's not going to help me because he he does say things that are not nice for the uh, elders. Uh, he, you know, it's disrespectful when you're down south. Down here, I know that everybody looks at everything is with respect. Because, you know, there's a, also a huge senior population here. This is kind of an ideal place to live, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's nice. Besides the heat now, the heat is rough at times, but it is a, generally a nice place to live, and especially those who just can't seem to leave. I mean, you know, and if we leave, we end up coming back. There's not anyone I've ever met that left Rock Hill that didn't say they missed it so much or miss that area or this territory so much. And that's surprising because, you know, sometimes you leave and you're like, ooh, glad I'm gone from there. But they actually say, oh, I miss it. You know, I miss it. So we have something good here. Did I answer your question? Okay. Okay. But that, and, and tell me it again. Say it again. About uh, the independence just... There aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> They don't call this a red state for, for, for a reason, but you know what? Uh, I, independent is, is one of those, um, those mysteries to me. Because <laughs> independent, they spend a lot of time talking about an independent vote. I feel like everybody has things they agree with and things you don't agree with, right? So you have to just choose what's the best for not only yourself, but your neighbors. Right? The people around you. So independents are people who need to make a decision. <laughs> and that decision is for them themselves. So I would hope if there are independents here that we'll reach them with the message and that they'll simply say, well, you know, sometimes I vote this way, sometimes I vote that way. I think for the country, I'm going to vote that way. <laughs> so that's what we got to do. We got to do, but we got to show our motivation, show our excitement, and shout from the mountaintop. We're going to lose our democracy if we don't vote. 
Let's change the dynamic. We cannot have 45% Democrat and have 90% Republican. We cannot have 30% minority, meaning black, four to 8% and our census is way off y'all. Y'all know that, right? Four to 8% because of the last administration, scaring the heck out of people that, that didn't have to be citizens to, to be in the count. We need to know who's here, right? That affects everything, our services and everything else. So, you know, they made that tricky and difficult. So we don't have a real count, but 4% was what we had for Hispanic, who lives here, who knows better. And then we had like 2% um, Asian, okay? And so what we gotta do is have that type of representation. 30% black, one representative. No one should vote on a race, okay? Vote for the one who's gonna vote for you. And they happen to be a minority, then that is gonna be good for everybody. But here's the situation, we're, we're underrepresented. That's just the point, I have to make that point. We're underrepresented by the numbers in, democracy, in Democrat versus Republican. We're underrepresented in, in the demographic. And that's by design. And that's what we gotta change. We gotta say, you know what? Let's be representative of at least who lives here, works here, pays taxes here, have children here, go to school here, you know what I mean. Need good health care here. Yeah, so I hope the message will change him. Just want to be thorough, make sure. So I just have a comment and um, saying that most of the people in this room did not grow up here or have lived here but have transplanted from somewhere. Um, I'm one of those people, lived in Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, for 34 years. Swing state. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, the politics there was all over the map. Yes. But my family grew up, and I grew up in Durham, North Carolina. And my husband's from, people are from South Carolina, so we kind of came back and mm -hmm. retired here. And so I'm just... Um, happy to be able to get to see you, meet you, hear what you have to say, because not growing up here, not living here, not knowing the any, dynamics, right? none of it, right. that it makes such a difference um, for me yes. and will motivate me to do more oh. in the um, upcoming election. Thank you, guys, because you know, that's what it's gonna take, why, why I love the new blood that's come to grace this beautiful place. It's gonna get better and better and better because uh, one of my favorite sayings by Nancy Pelosi, ask me how I feel about Nancy. <laughs> I love her. Why? Because that's a woman of policy. That's a no-nonsense type of lady. That's a woman who can let all those things just roll off her back and keep you in mind. So I love this great saying that she says, and I will tell you that this pin that I wear says, one country, one destiny. Does anyone know about that saying, one country, one destiny? I got it from watching her on a forum or something. She was sitting on a forum, not hosting it. And, and she wears this pin, and I loved it so much I had to find it. And one country, one destiny says it all, right? We're one country, we have one destiny. <coughs> but it was the inscription inside of the jacket of Abraham Lincoln the night he was assassinated. So that was what was inside. And this lady named Ann Hand makes it, I think she's in DC. And so I found it and I try to wear it everywhere I go because one country, one destiny. But the greatest saying I've ever heard said, and I'll give her credit, not knowing if she created it, but she's the only one I ever heard say it. Diversity is our strength, right? Diversity is our strength, and unity is our power. So we can unify and, and love the diversity, which was why I said I love new blood. It brings diversity, not only in, in culture, but in ideas, in, in ways to build, in ways to live together, to show everybody how it's done. I, 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 I love that that has happened here. So. Um, we need you. <laughs> I need you. Here's the well, to kind of piggyback on what she was saying, we, 
we moved, we lived in Charlotte, we lived in North Carolina, basically, even though we grew up, I grew up in Rock Hill, she grew up in New York. We lived in Charlotte for many years, and we were, we voted in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And now moving here in Fort Mill, when you watch television stations here, it's flooded, we're right on that state line. So all you see is North Carolina political ads. Mm -hmm. You very rarely see Me too. <laughs> South Carolina ads. The only station that I found that you can get on cable is WIS in Columbia. Yes. And I grew up on that living in Rock Hill, but I very rarely watched it because by living in Charlotte for so long, we're just been just our mindset is North Carolina. Yes. So we're trying to get back into the South Carolina politics because we were very active. So to pay, piggyback on you, you were saying, I'm glad you're here, but we very rarely see political ads in South Carolina because we're right on the state line. Right, it's so true. Else. It's almost like you feel like you're here in North Carolina, right? right. Even I have that issue because I live in the country, like a very rural area, but it's off of 77, just about five minutes going south, right? It's a town called Edgemore. So in that town, you know, you, you feel like, oh, we're still in the city, you get out, and you're definitely in the country. But so we have satellite. And all we get is North Carolina. So you can't tell me I don't live in North Carolina. However, <laughs> I make a strong point, obviously, to know everything. Because I, like you said, living in a different part of the state, you'll get, you'll get all of the state. And you just have to get your news by concertedly making the effort to get that news. I spend a lot of time watching the house floor <laughs> okay and the senate floor and the, the the committee hearings and so i'm a nerd geeked out with con congressional stuff so that's why i like to um kind of avoid the the big propaganda machine that's out there you know i i, I have to know what's current and current events so i do partake of that but i will share uh, this i like free speech tv that is awesome um, because it's just a lot of factual based information and people can call in. It used to be C-SPAN for me. My mom and I would geek out and call each other raving about, did you hear what he said? You know, and go on and on. Or boy, that was great. <laughs> we would agree with it. But what I liked about C-SPAN, the morning Washington Journal, was they would always present both sides of an issue and you have to deal with the call-ins, wherever they're from. But it was real, it was raw, it was whether you agreed or not. It's great to hear other perspectives when you're making decisions. And I want, I love to see Congress get back to that. Uh, I might not be running if we had a functional Congress. But I'm running and I'm so proud to be because I can help bring that functionality back where our state's concerned. But there was a time when there wasn't the kind of divisiveness that we have now. But we have to realize that time is gone at this moment. And now we have to bring us to a place where at least we have democracy. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I just have a comment. Um, you know, there are times where, you know, we or people vote on certain things, you know, may go with the Democrats or may go with the Republicans mm -hmm. and may be in the middle or whatever. But when I was out canvassing, I would tell people, who's going to get you closest to the bus stop? So that's what I want to tell people here as well. Who's going to, you know, if you're, you want this bus stop, who's going to get you closer to it? Mm -hmm. And forget about you know, what party you have voted for in the past, but who's going to get you there, you know, to that stop or even closer to it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to say. And also, before we lose our Zoom people, um, are there I any questions? I forgot on Zoom. Hey, Zoom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah, are they're behind doing you. there? They're actually behind you. Oh. So are there any questions for the people hey, that guys. are on Zoom? I've totally ignored you. Forgive me. Are you it, Jan? No, Candy, Jan, Wesley. Who's the guy in the middle right there? Is that you? Uh, he looks familiar. <laughs> Gary? Oh, thank you, Candy. <laughs> thank you. Yes, guys. Uh, 
I enjoy being with you. Okay. Oh, I want to make one point. She was saying about sometimes you, and, and there are issues that you might agree with someone else on. You want to get that person. But guys, I will just say, not out of just plain partisanship, because it's sort of words that just kind of send a little chill up my spine. And it's divisive words that cause us to think that we're separate from each other because we are not separated in this world. And there's no way to separate each other. I don't care how hard some people try. It's just not gonna happen, right? So this time though, guys, if you want to just maintain some sense of stability, you gotta vote up and down the ticket for Democrat. Right. You just gotta click, hit the D, let it go. But I hope you do it with a smile and eyes open because this time you, your eyes gotta be open. You're doing this for the democracy our life, and not just um, a democracy as a word, but as a lifestyle, y'all. We don't want to be under a dictatorship. We are tired of people getting away with breaking laws and not getting punished for it. You got to punish people who break laws, okay? And, and we've watched people who consider themselves above the law actually make us believe that, that they're above the law. So the way you shake that up, rock the worlds with the votes, and get rid of every single person that's blocking progress. And that's all they do. OK, if, if you do vote for a Republican, please hit me up with why. Before. Text me, call me, email me. Tell me why would you ever. Yes, ma'am? I'm sorry, but I am a Republican. Wait, but well, I will vote Republican. OK, well, why? Why? Thank you. Wait a minute. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me. We oh, need sorry. Okay. I love that. Thank you. What right. is your name? No, I thought it was more than fair to be here to listen to and what I you have to that. say. And I love that. Thank you. You know, I'm open-minded. Thank you. But, and I hope that... You know, yeah. some things that you have said, I disagree, okay. but that's your right, yes. and I have my right to think yes. how I feel. Yes. You know, so that's all I've got to say. Well, on, on policy, though, I, I, okay, I'm just... Okay, you're saying the Democrats have the House. Mm -hmm. The Senate, mm -hmm. the White House. Yes. So what are you saying that we need to get back when you've got it? Okay, well... Explain that, that one that's to a me. Great and question. also I want to know how you feel about immigration. About? Immigration. Oh, that we should I mean, have... do you think the border is open or closed now? Our border is following the laws that are on the books. And the way I feel about it is we have to continue to do what we have on the books. And we have to be a, a nation that doesn't so much, I don't think that the, that the border issue is the biggest problem we have in this country. It is the people that currently live here, work here, pay tax here, build your houses, serve your food. Those are the people that pay taxes. Pay taxes! <laughs> that, you know what, that makes us, that makes us, that makes the whole country go around, that, that we, we need to deal with. So that, was, that would be my answer, is that the border is not the issue. The issue are the people who are here, who, who do all this stuff for this country, right? I'm a builder. So about 90% of the house that I build would be better built, obviously, because I can't find the help otherwise by sometimes immigrants. So, and, and I'm going to tell you, probably every house out here was built by immigrants. So, so, so my point is, when we want to shoo them away, or we want to stop, we spend too much time, I think, as a country. Okay, so this is not, you know, one thing I hope that you learn about me, and you might like me, <laughs> is that I, I, I'm not a um, person that No, I'm saying that I don't have nothing to, against you. Right, that, not that would be um, antagonistic. But I am a person who is clear about the fact that we're neglecting the, the bigger problem, right? And until we address that problem, I think that we got to, uh, just let the border be the border. Let them keep doing what they're doing at the border. 
and let's deal with the people here and make sure, of course, that it's legal, that it's, it's solid, you know? That's, of course, every country that has a border wants to make sure that people do it properly. So I am 100% for doing things the legal way, you know, in my own life and, and what I'm, and other lives too. But we, but that, that's just how I feel about the border. I hope I answered your Amber question. Lane. But thank you, though. No, thank you. And I'm so glad you're here. And, and when I said why, I, I really seek to know the reasons that uh, people vote the way that they do, because we are in this together. And so we got to look out for each other. And so whatever policies and not people, right, not people, but policies, we got to just make sure that it's good for us. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I'm not strictly an R person. Right. But you want to hear? Time, yes. I will vote for you. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's, that's good. I mean, everybody should be that way, right? They should. Let and, and when I make the statement, up and down the ticket, up and down the ticket, right? I, like I said, maybe 15, 20 years ago, I would, I would never have said that. I would say vote for the candidate that is when I was knocking doors and canvassing, you know, we're we're taught to ask, are you registered to vote and that kind of thing. You know, you're not really supposed to push a, a certain party, right? So when I, unless you're doing phone banking for a candidate, that's not you know what you do. So it was about the getting out of being active in your democracy, right? Forming the 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 the, the way that you want to live, how things function around you, being a part of of your decisions that you have to make, right? So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Right. So, but the only reason I say that now, up and down the ticket, is because of, of looking at the, the policies and how it affects people's lives and trying to see who's got the better policy that's going to bring us up and not keep us down. So, but, and, but, but you know our state is at the bottom of everything, right? We're at the bottom of education. We're at the bottom of infrastructure. We're at the bottom of health, way at the bottom of health care. Okay, for the outcomes, access, and for, um, for outcomes, access, and affordability, right? So, so, so again, when I am running, right? I'm not running to, uh, for personality, right? I was taught to love everybody, so brought up in a Baptist church, you know, taught to love everyone, everyone loves me. We treat each other alike good, you know, follow the commandments, do all these things that you want others to do for you, right? But it's about, um, then at the end of the day, I want to make sure that the things that are being written into law actually don't hurt people and are actually there to benefit uh, our fellow man or our territory, our areas, you know, that we have to live in and be a part of. So my, my point and reason for running is on policy. Uh, that, uh, that's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to get at so that we can take the state from the bottom to the top. And the only thing I can think of that has kept uh, out us where we are today is the leadership. Uh, and, and of course, people, we all have personal responsibility, right? So we don't negate our personal responsibility because we have to take personal responsibility. But we depend on the leadership to make good policies and make decisions that will, that will benefit us and, and, and grow us, like investing in the areas that make our schools the best schools, that make our students not behind but ahead and have access to the best technology to learn or the best teachers to teach. My, like I said, my mom went out for 31 years and retired. She loved her students. Her students loved her, both when it was segregated and integrated. So they all loved her. She taught a little town called Whitmire, South Carolina. And I'm telling you, it's probably was majority of Caucasian, white. And I'm tell, it was just, that's what I love about the South. You know, we, there's so much different, but there's also so much together because we can't be separated really from each other. But we can't have one group of people trying to keep another group down. And I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about through policies. Okay, and if you happen to be of a certain race, then that's just the way it is. But we have got to think about each other and stop being on the bottom. I want the state 
to get out of the bottom. We got to get at least headed toward the top. And if I can't do it for the whole state, but I can help this district, right? Yeah. Right? Can I, can I add a comment uh, to the previous comment? Yes. Um, immigration. That's a hot button item, and the yes, politicians in this country have taken advantage of that issue by promoting their own um, their own things. Uh, what we need, and I want to hear that from a politician, it's not the border. It's immigration reform that we need. Correct. As long as we don't have immigration reform, Correct. and the Republicans have not done that, and the Democrats have not done that. Mm -hmm. We need immigration reform mm -hmm. to bring this issue back to its normal uh, normal mm -hmm. proportions. Mm -hmm. This country has been built by immigrants. Absolutely. And All that's the future of, of this country. If we close our borders, which one side wants, this country will not have a great future. And if we open our borders and letting everybody in, I've seen that in Europe. I was there four months ago. It's awful. We cannot do that either. We need immigration reform, yes, which will uh, bring us uh, a good future like we've had a good past. Where, mm -hmm. are you, where were you in Europe? What part? Uh, I lived in various countries. I was born and raised in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I worked in, in, in the Netherlands, Holland. And uh, I worked in Germany, lived in Germany. I worked in France, lived in France. I worked in Switzerland. And which and one of those was, I came was over the immigration? Um, well, we, we have, of course, in Europe, we have an awful situation with the refugees, yeah. um, particularly from the Middle East and, and uh, now from uh, Northern Africa. Gosh. Uh, and, and it's you an know issue. What? And, and of course, the Ukraine, uh, in addition to that Yes, now, that's what I was thinking, uh, maybe I, Ukraine. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but that's a different situation. Yes, but, but to uh, your point... We you, need immigration reform we do. to guide immigration yes, into this country, which we dearly need, we need. to Mainly have a healthy society. For, yeah, for shortages of work that we have right now, um, that's one other good reason why the people who are currently here could have status enough to be able to continue to contribute to our country and not be in the shadows and not you know, have to live that way. We shouldn't uh, have people live that way. So immigration reform is the key. But some things that all of you guys are saying just bring up more and more, and I feel like we just put around a circle and talk all night, but we might need to have some, some things to keep our lips wet <laughs> and tongue, tongue wet, lips wet too. But I will tell you, when you said refugees, you know, a lot of people immigrate because of where they're coming from. And those situations are dire, so they're looking for, obviously, a better life, right? So everyone in this country immigrated here except for the indigenous people. Let me just put that out there, right? No one was ever, ever here before the indigenous people. So we are all immigrants. <laughs> I think we can all agree to that, number one. And I know the, the ones who came here first did not have papers. So they came and they're here and, and we're the better for it because all of us, we're here today and we're still growing in diversity. Uh, but the climate, I recently heard some very important data, is gonna move a lot more people. Not only here, uh, looking for for a place to live that doesn't kill them, where the temperatures aren't, you know, 120. And I'm telling you, I heard that because of climate change, immigration influx, and I'm not talking about just, you know, that border situation, we're talking about with Mexico, but all over the world, is just gonna become worse and worse. So climate has to be at the top of the list, and why I'm so glad that Inflation Reduction Act passed, because it's gonna make a dent right in it, within 10 years, you know, 40% cut in emissions. And again, it just changes the dynamic. So we've been living off fossil fuels and, 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 and destroying the earth. It's just the result of it. I, I don't have anything against it. I have to get gas and go to. But I don't have anything against the fact of how we had to move. But we do need to continue to move forward. And our state is an agribusiness state. So we can have all kinds of... Um, of, 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 of new fuel productions and, you know, off our lands and just be creative. But I think it's just a turn of the way people work. And, and that's why, you know, guys, I think those oil prices were high. Just a side note, because the oil industry knows that they are going to be 
teetering out soon and not overnight, and I don't expect it to be. We need to have both, but we need to save our planet. Our children need it so bad, and that is their number one issue. If you want to get voters out, especially the Gen Z, they are passionate about wanting to have clean air, water, and energy. <laughs> and I think we all should be, <laughs> really. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to come out right, but uh, you'll get my drift. Uh, I taught children in New York. I taught, uh, they came from Dominica, they came from Africa, they came, you know, from all over. Their parents came here because they wanted a better world. All of us. My father came from Russia. He met my mother here. She was here. Her family came from Russia, and my grandparents came from Austria. If they didn't come here, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm. This country is supposed to be open to everybody. Yes, maybe it's too, he said it right, we need reform. There's too many people coming in. But many of the people that are coming across the border have relatives here. They're busing them from Texas into New York and yeah, into, right and into uh, uh, Washington. They're, 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 people are picking them up. They're gonna live with fa families. These families live three rooms, 42 people. It doesn't matter. They're here in America. The jobs that they're going to be here doing, you and I are not going to do that job, okay? We're, we don't have to worry about our children uh, getting taken over, that, that they're going to come and take away from us. We have to, this world was made, this country was made on immigrants. I'm sure your family didn't come over on the Mayflower, or did they? And if they did, okay. And then yeah. we've had yeah, some, oh gosh, and so we've you had know. some, you know firsthand. You know and we've Italians. had some, yeah, okay, we've had some good Italians that are here, and we've had some, you know, a little bit different. But that goes with every nationality, whether he's Italian, Jewish, uh, Spanish, uh, everybody, every nationality has brought their best and their worst. Mm -hmm. In this, this is a melting pot. Mm -hmm. And we have to, you, you say that we have to change, the country has to change, and you're right. But it has to change by welcoming people and trying to help people, not pushing them out. Those, those people, they, they walk and they swim at the river and they die in it, why, to get here for what? There's a better world here for their children, just like your mother wanted a better world for you, sent you to college. They want something for their kids, too. We've got to find a way to live together and stop fighting with each other. This thing with, I mean, I'll tell you, the honest truth, Obama came out, I didn't know him from a hole in the wall, and I wasn't really into sort politics like then. <laughs> I voted for Bush. The next year, the next time he ran, I voted for him. Uh, when McCain came, I voted for McCain. I loved McCain. I thought he was a wonderful man. And, and McCain things, was a good man. You know, and I voted for him. Uh, a good man. I'll cross the aisle when I see somebody that's worthwhile crossing the aisle. But right now in the politics that we have for today, I don't see anybody that I want to cross the aisle for. And I'm a very liberal person. I'll go this way. I, want to, I go for what's right. You know, and not, pretty for, much not, what, for, what, not for this yeah, one and that. Before <laughs> I said I only vote blue. Since I came down here, I only vote blue. Because I see such the things that are going on and the things that are said that are not quite true. Uh, and, and I listen to all the stations. I put the mix on, on, on DirecTV Channel 200. You get Fox, you get MSNBC, you get CNN, you get the British uh, station. I listen to all the news. I want to see us all come together. We're not enemies. You know, the first no. year that, I'll step in a second. The first year that we were here, we put up a Christmas tree. And you know Judy Kelly. And she said to me as I was standing on the top of the tree, you're a Jewish girl and you're putting the star on our tree. And I said, we're all the same. It doesn't matter. We're here to work together, to be together. And that's the only way this world is going to change. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's okay. uh, we have one other. Uh, you still want to talk? Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, nice, nice doing to good. meet you. Nice to meet you um, as well. When I went to vote in the primaries, I had a really, really hard time finding out who was running in South Carolina, yes. what their positions were, okay. and Really, the 
representatives in this area, they were not reaching out uh, to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we went to vote, we really, I mean, as a person that's only been here for about four and a half years, mm -hmm. I had a very difficult time just choosing uh, or knowing what the position of the candidates were. I, I believe that, I mean, I'm glad that you came here, but I hope that there is more information forthcoming for us mm -hmm. so that we can make an intelligent decision. Yes, ma'am. I have heard that from other people. Um, when other candidates, you know, if we're stomping together, they say, hey, and to your point about what's yours, about what the DN, yours, the DNC or the South Carolina Depart um, Democratic Party, saying that there's got to be a way to partnership to, to let people know more about their candidates. Okay, so we're addressing that me as a candidate can do what I can do. So I tried to put my website out as quickly as possible and do as thorough as, of a job. I planned my website for the general election. <laughs> I didn't do it like a primary, meaning the least I tried to give you the most information about myself. So if you, if you have visited it, then thank you. If you haven't, please do. And you'll find out more about me and my positions on the issues that you see on the back of that, that fan that I made, thank you very much. And, oh yeah, it's in use. And um, that's how, but as a party, we have also asked them to participate, especially in primary season, when people don't know anything about anybody, to get more information about the candidates. Then a lot of times I would be invited to groups like this um, that had neighborhood you know, groups. So, Thank you for reaching out, Gary, and asking me to come. Thank you for hosting and having me. But I try not to say no <laughs> if I can. And this was particularly appealing because I hadn't been in this area before and wanted to show my face, tell you my platform is you, <laughs> and also to um, let you know who I am and get to know me and ask questions and, you know, to see where I stand and what I want to do to help make this district what it should be, living up to what we can be the best. Like I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. If you have any more questions, I am here. So the website for her, for the uh, campaign is ehunleyforcongress.com. It's on there. Um, so it's at the bottom of your um, fan. And um, also, like he said, we're going to do some, um, some things, Medical Mondays. Uh, she's going to host some Medical Mondays. She's going to host some Hanging with Hunleys. And uh, Gary here is going to help us produce those. So uh, to your point where you didn't see the candidates out during the primaries, that was across the board. But for Evangeline, you'll be seeing her um, very much so out and socially on social media. You'll see her um, out more. We're going to get, you know, the county parties to help us get her out. So you'll see her out more. But uh, definitely go to the website, ehunleyforcongress.com. And then definitely, uh, like I said, podcasts. You'll see her out doing Medical Mondays. You'll see her out um, doing Hanging for Hunley. And if you have any questions, please reach out to the website. There's a um, place where you can um, send comments and if all of that fails, you can email me at Lenore, L-E-N-O-R-E, -E, at ehunleyforcongress.com. Just simple as that. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. And did I say there was a donate button? <laughs> <laughs> Big donate button. Now they've, they've convinced me about this. Yes, yeah, so Medical Mondays, guys. We came up with this great idea. We're going to start doing every Monday. We're going to have a topic of interest. Uh, and there's so many in, in the medical world. We're going to talk about what is healthcare for all? What exactly does that mean? How does it work, right? So the format that we're toying around, this is part of the future meeting, mm -hmm. is going to be, uh, if you're interested, and we'll decide a date, but look for it to start in the next couple of weeks, meaning the 1st of September, run it about five weeks on, on big topics. We're going to have a policy that we're trying to pass, or maybe that has passed or is passing, right? A current policy, both maybe state and federal. 
and then we're going to have a professional, a doctor, uh, whichever the topic is, whether it's mental health, we'll have a professional with mental health, we'll have a professional with, when we talk about Medicare and Medicaid, we'll have a professional when we talk about, uh, already say mental health? Yeah. Okay, that, and what were the other topics, do you remember? Well, we're going to do mental health, uh, Medicare. Men's health, men's women's health. health. Men's health. Yeah, so we'll have people qualified who are currently working in our areas, and we have some great doctors already on board who want to join us and be there to um, share. So we'll have someone who's going through maybe one of those issues, talk about what kind of policies affect, and then have a professional come in and share what they have to say. So putting that together and then hanging with Hunley, we'll take these platform items, Try to do about six or seven of those once a week where that'll be live. You can call in and uh, ask any questions about that specific topic, offer your opinion, whatever you like, and see how many I can get in in that time. Okay, so hopefully with that and the other, Gary's help and your participation, then maybe we can get the word out mm -hmm. that representation is on the way. <laughs> yeah. Right there is the red donate button. <laughs> so you won't be able to miss it. You'll see Evangeline's beautiful face and right there is the red donate button. So you won't be able to miss it. Here's a visual for everyone, okay? So we appreciate you. We appreciate everybody coming out, okay? Thank you so much. We appreciate you. So, Lenore, Evangeline, thank you very much. I am very excited about your candidacy.